What's up, everybody? Welcome to Water. My name is Tyler, and I'm your real life remembrancer. Today, we're tackling kit bashing. Kit bashing is one of my favorite things to do in this hobby. It lets you take complete control of your model and really bring your vision to life. Now, this video is obviously aimed at newer hobbyists, but also older hobbyists alike, especially if you've joined in the last three, four, or five years, uh, and you're mostly familiar with Primaris kits or Otherwise, the uh, maybe newer Necron kits as well, where sort of, you know, half of the model is half a head, half a torso, half a leg, uh, and then the other bit that you attach to it is the other half of the head, torso, and leg. Maybe kit bashing isn't something that you've tried before. So this video aims to tackle that and teach you some of the insights and tools that you can use to, uh, you know, kit bash to your heart's desire. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, everybody, to get started, we're gonna need tools. Two tools you must have. One, hobby knife, two, nippers. All right, next up is the uh, Tamiya sponge sheet. This is sandpaper. You can get any kind of sandpaper you want. This is 3000 grit. I do recommend it. It's very nice. It contours well with models, but it also runs out quickly. You're gonna want some tweezers. I got this set of tweezers. It's very nice on Amazon for a few dollars. You're gonna want green stuff. This is a little bit more advanced. You don't necessarily need it, but it can help you with uh, certain issues, especially with recasts. Also, plastic putty, it's super awesome. You'll see why later. This is Uhu Tack. You can get any kind of tack you want. You just need sticky tack. It helps you pose models, stick things together, set things up for paint, etc. This is just a super sharp pokey thing that I got. It really helps with resin in particular and for any tricky situations. All right, so we're gonna be jumping in with this Death Watch Watch Captain. He is a Terminator Captain. He will be converted to a Dark Angel Captain. You can see here we have one shoulder pad that we can put on here, but the other, other shoulder pad is part of the mold. So we're gonna need to take care of that because I wanna use two unique shoulder pads. You can also see here this cape is attached to this arm. We're gonna to have to separate the cape. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these bits that I've collected. I ordered a lot of these on eBay or collected them myself. Uh, it includes a bunch of Dark Angels bits, different heads and stuff. We'll take a look at these different heads here. We have a third party bit. Some bits from the Terminator kit, the uh, Deathwing Knights kits. Ultimately, the head that I end up choosing is this one here with the studs. I really like this one. And you can see I have a shoulder pad here from one of the Deathwing Terminator kits we're gonna use. Got a nice little knife to put on there. Another uh, sort of more regal version of the Terminator shoulder pad. We have a Dark Angel Storm Bolter to get on there. And uh, the Sergeant Wings from the Deathwing Terminator kit as well. Finally, we have from the Dark Vengeance kit, the Dark Angels Captain Sword. But what you can see here is that the previous owner uh, stuck that shoulder pad on there. So we're gonna have to take that off. All right, jumping into this set of bits here. These bits are mostly meant to go with the uh, Mark VII, just standard tactical Marine squad that you saw at the beginning of this video. Um, these are basically just mostly veteran bits, Vanguard veteran bits and things like of that nature. And this is all for a kill team that I have planned. It's got some custom lore and I will definitely be featuring the custom lore and everything like that in a future video. So definitely keep an eye out for that and for the rest of the kit bashes that come along with this kill team. Um, so I just wanna show you guys some of these different bits here and help you to understand that you know, you can really go on eBay and for a few bucks a pop, you can get some super unique bits and it's uh, it's much easier to collect an arsenal of things that you need to put together interesting kit bashes than you might think. You know, a lot of people hear kit bash and they think, oh, I have to buy two whole kits from Games Workshop at full price just to make like one model. And like, yeah, you could do that, but that's just like not really how it works. Um, you know, you can just buy individual bits or just collect bits over time from many different kits. 
There's a few more of these Vanguard veteran bits. Um, today's video is going to focus on the captain, however, and like you've seen, I've chosen that he's going to be a Dark Angel. The kill team is kind of Death Watch uh, based in the sense that each uh, character in the kill team will have a different chapter, a different Space Marine chapter. Um, but in that's kind of the only way that they're similar to Death Watch. But anyway, we'll talk about that more later in another video. But today, the kit bash that we're going to be working on is the captain for Kill Team Commander. Now, the first thing that we're going to jump into here is the shoulder pad bit that has been glued on. So this is not the shoulder pad that is part of the bit from the mold. This shoulder pad was glued on by the previous owner that I bought this arm bit from. And I do not want to use it because it's for uh, Deathwing Knights. And that's not what this guy is. So what you're going to see here is I'm just going to start cutting away with the hobby knife a little bit. And what I'm trying to do is just kind of get in there and start poking at the, at you know, I don't know if he used super glue, um, but it definitely looks like he used super glue and not plastic cement. So all I'm really doing is trying to break the shoulder pad off of that super glue. And that's pretty easy to do. So you can see I've kind of just pushed and cut into this shoulder pad a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and grab some needle nose pliers. You don't necessarily need to do this. You could just keep working with the hobby knife. Um, but I just want to show you that it's pretty easy. You can just pull these little pieces off. It doesn't really harm the actual arm piece. Um, and so, you know, it's pretty easy to actually break that glue. So here I go ahead and jump back to the knife. And I don't believe it's long before it ends up popping off. I go ahead and cut a little bit more uh, off of the top here. And you can see I'm always just sort of cutting away from the bit that I want to save, right? So the arm is what I want to save here. I don't want to damage the arm or anything like that. So you can see all of my cuts are in directions that are away in, in all ways uh, from the arm. So right here, we uh, go ahead and just do a little bit more poking and boom, she goes and pops off. And as you can see, the actual shoulder that's left behind is not really damaged at all. We'll go ahead and scrape some of that glue residue off and uh, it'll be good as new. So while we're scraping here, I just want to talk a little bit about the philosophy behind kit bashing. And, you know, it's it's a very creative process and it's something that you need to approach with kind of, you know, in our an artistic mind. Um, it's definitely not a science and there's no real right way to do it or one way to do it, um, you know whether you go buy multiple kits to make something or buy individual bits, whether you use green stuff or putties, whether you use milliput, you know, whether you use third party bits that aren't even from games workshop, whether you make custom bits out of sprue, you know, that's something that I've done before. There's all these different ways that you can uh, approach it. And Really, the only limitation when you're kit bashing is your imagination. And that's something that I think is super cool and definitely something to keep in mind if you're just getting started because it can be easy to get overwhelmed or to think, you know, oh, I don't have the right thing or I don't have the talent to do this or whatever, but you really just got to jump in and start hacking away. You know, you don't get the confidence to cut bits apart and everything like that without trying. And, you know, it's always possible that you can mess up, but that's just part of the learning process and you know for most of the time you won't mess up because it's really not that hard uh, all it does or all it takes rather is a little bit of practice a little bit of determination and patience i would say patience is the the number one thing to have when working on a kit bash uh because you never know what kinds of interesting problems you're going to run into or have to solve So we're jumping back to the sprue now. We finished cleaning up that arm. It's good to go. We're going to go ahead and cut the body out. 
and just start taking a look at uh, what the general form that we have is, the general silhouette. It takes me a minute here to realize that I can just cut the front out as well to <laughs> get a good look, to get a better look. And really what I'm doing here is just thinking. So you can see I'm pulling out the uh, the little uh, wing bit from the sergeant of the Terminator kit. And this kind of goes back to what I was saying before, where it's really, you just, it's kind of trial and error. You just got to constantly, you know, test how things look, test fit things, make sure everything's going together. You know, you dry fit everything when you're kit bashing 100% of the time. And uh, just take your time and really, you know, think about it. Look, I'm comparing the arms here and just checking to see, okay, will I be able to put this cape on there if I cut it off? You know, is it going to work with the other arm? Do I have to make modifications to the other arm to make the cape fit, et cetera, et cetera? Um, so, you know, these are just things that you, you don't, you're not going to know these things going into the project, right? These are things that you run into and that you figure out as you're going, and that's all part of the fun. So right here, I'm a little concerned. I don't really know how to proceed. I go ahead and grab the nippers instead of starting with the hobby knife because the cape is, you know, pretty delicate and it would be easy to rip or tear the cape. And so I want to, uh, I don't want to use any undue pressure with the knife. Right here, I'm kind of pointing just to the um, attachment point of the cape where the cape attaches to the backpack or the back of the Terminator armor rather. And now that all I've got left is uh, the remnants of this cord here, I go ahead and switch back to the hobby knife and just start cutting it away. Now there is one little bit of detail that we do end up losing here on the cape because the cord here kind of goes up. There's like a very, it's very hard to see, but there's a trim on the cape and then the trim has like a tiny embossment down through the center of the trim. And it's the, the, the trim is easy to recreate, but the embossment is not necessarily something I'm confident that I can recreate. But I also think that it's gonna be hidden behind the extra little bits on the Dark Angel arm. So I'm not too worried about it. And we're just gonna have to kind of see how that gets along later on in the build process. Also, you can see here I'm using my fingernail. Uh, <laughs> I should have mentioned the third tool at the beginning of this video that was absolutely mandatory, which is fingernails. Uh, fingernails are a huge part of getting rid of mold lines and just making um, cuts that you've made and everything kind of smoothed out. It just fingernails are an incredibly powerful tool when hobbying. All right, so what I wanna do here is replace this Storm Bolter with the Dark Angel Storm Bolter. So you can see they are identical in size and everything. And all I have to do is leave the hand intact on the arm. Uh, I definitely prefer the hand that's on the arm because it has a more interest. It's got like um, four little rivets on the, the actual hand where the fingers begin. But even if I wanted to get rid of it, it would be kind of difficult because there's a little bit of an arm guard now on other kits, I have actually gotten rid of the hand with the arm guard. It is possible, but it's just much harder. Uh, but anyway, I want to preserve this hand anyway. You can see I pull out these uh, much larger wire cutters to cut this. You don't need that. You could just use your hobby knife, but I didn't want to. I was just trying to save time because I'm making the video. So go ahead and switch back to the knife here and cut away here. And you can see we got to be extra careful. We don't want to cut any fingers or anything or ruin anything. So we're slowly doing sort of angled cuts away from the part of the model that we want to preserve. And we'll do it in this direction and then we'll flip the model over and we'll do it in the reverse direction and we should get nice clean cuts. One thing to remember as well as I talk about cutting away from the part of the model that you want to preserve, also remember to always cut away from your fingers. 
a bloody model is uh, something that you only want to do with a hobby product that you bought to turn it bloody, not with your own blood. So you can see just taking the hobby knife here to sort of smooth everything out. I've gotten most of the actual material away and what I'm doing here is flattening the area where the actual hand makes contact with the storm bolter. And that'll be a nice smooth flat surface to make contact with. And last thing we have to do is cut away this little ring here because uh, it was meant to go with the the sling that I cut away because obviously it was also attached to the other storm bolter that we got rid of which if you wanted to have kept that and put it on this other storm bolter we could have done that uh, you would have just tried to make a really clean cut with your hobby knife on the ring that was attached to the storm bolter and just be careful not to bend the plastic so here you can see I'm taking the nippers and I'm actually getting rid of the hand on this storm bolter with the nippers. That's because whenever you have like a nice solid 90 degree angle cut to do, nippers work pretty well as long as they have a flat edge. Uh, if your nippers have a completely flat edge on one side, you can get 90 degree cuts pretty smooth. Uh, there is a little bit of risk of bending or stretching the plastic. Uh, I would say this is an advanced technique and you should kind of get used to doing stuff like this and working with plastic and seeing how strong it is and how tensile it is before you do something like that. But it, nippers can save you a lot of time um, if you're doing a 90 degree cut. So you can see here we've fitted um, the uh, storm bolter to the hand. Everything looks good. What we need to do now is take care of this shoulder pad. I don't want this shoulder pad, but what you can see is the mold, the plastic is completely filled in. You know, there's no gaps up in there. Like if you applied a shoulder pad to a shoulder. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our nippers and uh, this is a process that you can do on all the Primaris kits as well from the Indominus kits. And you can see here, I get the nippers kind of caught in just on the edge. Uh, you obviously want to preserve the actual shoulder shape, so when you go in for the pauldron, just make sure that your flat side of the nipper is right where the pauldron meets the shoulder. And we're going to cut through, and then you're going to cut it away, and you can see we've got a nice chunk missing now. And you can also start to see how we're going to cut along the shape of the shoulder. So what we're going to do is keep cutting sort of just a little, a few degrees more each time all the way over to the other side. And then when it gets narrow enough, we're going to cut straight down the center. And now I'm doing a test fit because I've got most of the cutting done. And we can see it's just slightly too big. So we're going to take the hobby knife and we're going to go in and uh, just you know, clean it up. We don't want to go too far because what we want to do is preserve how um, that those gaps were filled with the mold. We want to preserve that because it'll it'll just look best. It'll look more natural. So I'm trying to maintain as much of the shoulder material as I can, but still have a perfect fit. And this is looking pretty good. Gonna go ahead and check it out with the shoulder that's actually gonna go there. Nice, perfect fit. You can see if we uh, line everything up, which I kind of failed to do there, uh, it's it's looking good. It's it's definitely looking looking natural. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stick that on with tack, and that's pretty much it, everybody. We're gonna go ahead and stick everything uh, together with tack here, and we'll get to uh, check out the final result. There will be a part two to this video where we glue everything together and we use some of that green stuff and the putty to make some of these things that we've tried to fit together look a little bit more natural, a little bit more clean. And uh, we'll get this thing all assembled and it'll be it'll be complete and ready for paint. So it'll be super sick. And until then, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, check out my other videos and enjoy this outro.